War is an overarching statistic that takes into account many different facets of a player's game and puts them all down into one formula where we can measure just how good a player is above a replacement level player. But how do you calculate war and why is it useful? Let's dive into all that and more here in this video. Hey, my name's Colton and welcome to Base Knock Analytics. Statistics, analytics, and sabermetrics are the future of baseball. So the goal of this channel, whether you are a casual baseball fan or a die-hard sabermetrician, is to keep you informed on all the different happenings within the sabermetric world of baseball. We'll be defining different statistics such as war, ERA+, FIP, and so much more. The next decade of baseball will be run by the informed. So do yourself a favor, subscribe to the channel down below, and check out all the content that we have coming out about statistics, analytics, and sabermetrics. And now, let's get into the video. So wins above replacement is described on MLB.com as War measures a player's value in all facets of the game by deciphering how many more wins he's worth than a replacement level player at his same position. For example, a minor league replacement or readily available fill-in free agent. For example, if a shortstop and a first baseman offer the same overall production on offense, defense, and the base pass, the shortstop will have a better war because his position sees a lower level of production from replacement level players. So for an example, let's look at center field. Obviously, everyone knows that Mike Trout is the best player in baseball. So let's jump back into 2019 and look at his war from that year. So in 2019, Mike Trout was worth 8.5 F war. That means that he was worth 8.5 more wins than your average replacement level center fielder. There are multiple different kinds of war. Basically, they are based on what website you use to calculate it. F war stands for Fangraphs war, whereas B war stands for Baseball Reference war. Each individual website uses their own calculations of war to find out what a player is worth in terms of wins above replacement. Generally, they're relatively around the same, but for the most part, I will be using Fangraphs War. So just as a quick example of what Mike Trout did in 2019, he had a slash line of 291, 438, 645. Trout hit 45 home runs that year, the highest of his career, as well as 110 runs, 104 RBIs, and 11 stolen bases. All this was done in just 134 games. For comparison, we will use Malik Smith of the Seattle Mariners and his 2019 season. Malik Smith had a war of 0.0. .0. In other words, he was replacement level. So if we go off of what MLB.com uses as the definition for war, that means that the Seattle Mariners could have used a replacement minor leaguer or free agent and gotten the same amount of production that they did out of Malik Smith. In 2019, Smith slashed 227, 300, 335. In 134 games, Smith hit six home runs had 70 runs scored and 37 RBIs. He did, however, lead the league in stolen bases with 46. And you may be wondering how someone that led the league in a specific category is somehow just replacement level. And there into it lies the problem with war. There's no such thing as a perfect stat in baseball. When you take an all-encompassing stat, such as war, you'll begin to see the problems with this. So now let's look at MLB.com's definition of the formula of war. For position players, the number of runs above average a player is worth in his batting, base running, and fielding, plus adjustment for position, plus adjustment for league, plus the number of runs provided by a replacement level player per runs per win. Now all that may have just sounded like a bunch of mumbo jumbo, but to make it a little easier, basically war is calculated by using these statistics and then adjusting them per the leagues. So for example, the war of a first baseman in the American League will be different than the war of the first baseman in the National League, in large part due to the DH. And while this may be changing in future years, for now, because of the DH, difference in league adjustments is larger within the American League because first basemen are also often designated hitters. It's a little different for pitchers. Different war computations use either runs allowed per nine or fielding independent pitching. We'll get into those stats a little bit later on in this series. Those numbers are adjusted for league and for ballpark. Then, using league averages, it is determined how many wins a pitcher was worth based on those total numbers and his innings pitched. So similar to how it works with uh, war for position players, 
pitchers will have, I mean, if you're in the American League, your war will be calculated differently because you do not hit. Whereas in the National League, at least in 2021, it sounds like you're going to be hitting if you're a pitcher. It also is determined based on ballpark, so obviously the war of a pitcher in Coors Field is going to be a lot different than the war of a pitcher in Miami. They could have the exact same statistics at the end of the year, but because of where they pitch most of their games, their wars are going to be different. So why is war useful? War quantifies each player's value in terms of specific numbers of wins, and because war factors in a positional adjustment, it is well suited for comparing players who man different defensive positions. Again, war is not the perfect statistic. So far, there is no such thing as a perfect statistic for baseball. War is the attempt to combine a bunch of different statistics to basically grade a player out on an easy to understand scale. The better a player is, the higher their war is going to be. Over the next few videos, we'll be looking at different ways to evaluate a player based on their batting and pitching statistics. I hope this video on war did help you out and helped you learn a couple things about the future of baseball. If it did, please don't forget to like the video and subscribe, and in the comments down below, let me know if there's any specific statistics that you want to see us tackle on the channel that'll help you out in your future endeavors to learn more about baseball. The baseball season is fast approaching, and this is going to be the place to be if you want to learn more about baseball statistics. But until the next video, I hope you have a great rest of your day. I hope this video helped you out, and I'll see you in the next one.